There is this one simple thing behind the curtains of this epic show called life. One that could tear apart governments and countries, one that you rely on forever. For God's sake, this man cannot remain power. Кто бы ни пытался помешать нам, а тем более создать угрозы для нашей и приведет вас к таким последствиям, с которыми вы в своей истории еще никогда не сталкивались. Billionaire Elon Musk has sent three batches of SpaceX Starlink satellites over Ukraine. This one simple thing is called communication. Communications. An army lives and dies by it. For thousands of years, kings, queens, generals have relied on efficient communication to govern their countries and command their armies. At the same time, they all are aware of the consequences of their messages falling into wrong hands and revealing those secrets to rival countries and betraying vital information to opposing forces. What do you think would happen if China secretly plans to attack the United States and India finds that out? And even in reality, some of these secrets contain so vital information that they could lead the world into another world war. There have been so many horrifying incidents in the history that were caused by the interception of these secret messages. Still, you can't ignore the fact that codes are just everywhere. From beheading of the Queen of Scotland to deciphering of German Enigma codes, every single event leads into this dead-end tunnel which gives rise to this question. Will we ever achieve secured communication? To get to this answer, come with me on a journey. A journey to unravel mystery of secret communication. But there are some rules that you need to follow. Number one, you need to listen carefully. As carefully as you can. I never said that this is gonna be easy. But I can assure you that in the end, you will have the knowledge that is exclusive to some people. So hold on to your seats cause passing the chits is going to get more interesting. The first thing that you need to know is what is code? If you search on Google you will see this definition. A system of words, letters, figures or symbols used to represent others. Especially for the purposes of secrecy. Can you tell what is the meaning of this sentence? It looks gibberish, right? Yes, it is. But if you shift these alphabets to their immediate predecessor, you will get I love you. This technique is called Caesar cipher. It doesn't have to be immediate successor or predecessor. You can do this by shifting these alphabets to a distance of more than one letter. But as you have probably guessed, it is not very secure. It is just 25 guesses away to get deciphered. All you need to do is replace every element by shifting it forward or backward. And in not more than 25 attempts, you will have decoded this code. But just a slight change can make this code really mind boggling. Instead of shifting these elements, why not just randomly assign them to other letters? When we do so, we can generate even greater number of rearrangements. Can you guess how much? There are over 4 septillion rearrangements. It looks crazy, right? So those of you quitting this video right now, happy time guessing 400 septillion possibilities. But those of you who have kept up with me till now, I will show you an amazing way to decipher these types of codes. That technique is called frequency analysis. It is based on the idea that every language has its own specific patterns. In English, for example, the letter E shows up a lot. And some words like the are so common that it's hard to use even a sentence without them. So frequency analysis looks for the common words and also for common letters or sets of letters like ed or ing at the end of words. So now let's see how to decipher these kinds of monoalphabetic cipher. Imagine that we have intercepted this scrambled text. The challenge is to decipher it. We know that the text is in English 
and that it has been scrambled according to mono alphabetic substitution cipher. But we have no idea of the key. Searching all possible keys is impractical, so we must apply frequency analysis. So the first step is to create a table of frequencies of every alphabet in this enciphered text. As you can see, O, X and P are the most occurring letters in this enciphered text. So we can make a tentative assumption that O, X and P must be E, T or A. So now in order to proceed with confidence and pin down the identity of these three most common letters O, X and P, we need a more subtle form of frequency analysis. Instead of just simply counting the frequencies of these three letters, we can focus on how often they appear next to all other letters. For example, does the letter O appear before or after several other letters? Or does it tend to neighbor just a few special letters? Answering this question will be a good indication of whether O represents a vowel or a consonant. If O represents a vowel, it should appear before and after most of the other letters. Whereas if it is a consonant, it will tend to avoid many other letters. For example, the letter E can appear before and after virtually every other letter. But the letter T is rarely seen before or after B, G, J or V. This table here takes three of the most common letters in the cipher text O, X and P and lists how frequently each appears before and after every letter. For example, O and X appear after most of the letters in this cipher text and avoid only 7 and 8 respectively. While P is very much less friendly, it tends to lurk around just a few letters and avoid 15 of them. This evidence suggests that O and X represents vowels while P represents a consonant. Now we must ask ourselves which vowel are represented by O and X. They are probably E and A, the two most popular vowels in the English language. But does O represents E and X represents A or does O represents A and X represents E? An interesting feature in the ciphertext is that combination of O, O appears twice while X, X does not appear at all. Since the letters E, E appear far more often than A, A in plain text English, it is likely that O equals E and X equals A. At this point, we have confidently identified two of the letters in our ciphertext. Our conclusion that X equals A is supported by the fact that X appears on its own in ciphertext and A is one of the only two English words that consist of single letter. The only other letter that appears on its own in the ciphertext is Y and it seems Highly likely that this represents the only other letter in one letter English word which is I. Now let's identify an interesting letter in English, H. Once we have already identified the letter E, in English language the letter H frequently goes before the letter E, as in the, they, then, but it rarely appears after E. The table here shows how frequently the letter O which we think represents E goes before and after all the other letters in the ciphertext. The table suggests that B represents H because it appears before O on 9 occasions but it never goes after it. No other letter in the table has such an asymmetric relationship with O. Each letter in English language has its own unique personality which includes its frequency and its relation to other letters. It is this personality that allows us to establish the true identity of a letter, even when it has been disguised by monoalphabetic substitution. We have now confidently established four letters, O is E, X is A, Y is I and B is H. And now we can begin to replace some of the letters in the ciphertext with their plain text equivalents. Oh yeah, and before moving any further, I shall tell you the convention of writing codes and ciphers. It is always a good practice to keep ciphertext letters in uppercase while putting the plain text letters in lowercase. 
This will help us to distinguish between those letters we still have to identify and those that have already been established. And now it's time to do some guesswork. Because some of the words in ciphertext, for example, the most common three words in English are the and and. And these are relatively easy to spot. LHE, which appears six times, and APV, which appears five times. Hence, L probably represents T, and P probably represents N, and V probably represents D. We can now replace these letters in ciphertext with their true values. Once a few letters have been established, crypto analysis becomes a very rapid process. For example, the word at the beginning of the second sentence is CN. Every word has a vowel in it, so C must be a vowel. There are only two vowels that remain to be identified, U and O. And U does not fit, so C must represent O. We also have this word KHE, which implies that K either represents T or S. But we have already identified that L is T, so it becomes clear that K is S. And now there appears this phrase. A sensible guess would be 1001 nights. Now it seems likely that the final line is telling us that this passage is from the tales of 1001 nights. Now this implies M is U, I is F, J is R, D is G, R is L, and S is M. Now this is the summary of our achievements so far. By examining the partial cipher alphabet, we can complete the crypto analysis. The sequence void by in the cipher alphabet suggests that the cryptographer has chosen a key phrase as the basis for the key. Some guesswork is enough to suggest the key phrase might be a void by George Perek, which is reduced to this after removing spaces and repetitions. And now we can do some more hit and trial to fully identify the cipher text. And as you can see, this is our key and this is our cipher text deciphered so hope you guys learned something from this video if you like this video then please like it and subscribe to our channel for more educational documentaries like this and do let us know in the comments if we should make a series about this topic because this topic is really very vast so thank you for watching happy time crypto analyzing now i will see you in the next one so many days is yet to come Many times has come to pass Too many moments put aside Getting out alive Getting